Okay. I remember when I had some spring breaks. When I was in college, every year during spring semester, I would look forward to spring break. My freshman and sophomore year. Really? My cat is in heat. And I don't know if she can sense and tell that I'm a guy, I'm a male. Maybe it's the test, test, how do you say it? Testosterone I'm giving off. But whenever she's in heat, she just, she's all up on me. Like she's on my, she, she be, she be just be rubbing up on anything, you know, anything she can just rub on. If she can rub her body against it, she'll do it until she gets some dick. <laughs> but like, I don't know if it was just me because I'm a guy and testosterone and I'm male fumes and stuff like that, but she's just, whenever she's in heat, she's all up on me. And I have to literally get her off of me. Like, like she be on my girl too, but not nearly as much as she on me. I just went back home for the week and hung out with friends and family. But my junior year, me and my friend group from college all planned a trip to Florida for spring break. We were really excited and planned it several months in advance. When the time came, there were six of us total and we flew to Miami where the weather was much warmer than it was where we went to school in Michigan. Because there were six of us, we were all able to rent out an Airbnb with four bedrooms right near the city where there was lots to do within a walking distance. When we got there, it was immediately much warmer. Over the first few days, we all went around Miami to some beaches and restaurants and several bars in town. We went out a lot, and most nights we'd go to the bars nearby our Airbnb and then walk back. The bars were always really crowded and fun because of all the other people that were there for spring break and with it just being Miami in general. One night, I was walking home by myself because I was really tired and the rest of my friends were still out. I decided to go back early because we were only staying about five blocks away. As I walked the area, as I walked, the area slowly got quieter and quieter until I reached the property where we were staying, which was typically pretty quiet. The whole time I was walking, I heard footsteps behind me about 20 feet back. I never really stopped to look though, because at first it seemed normal. But now that I was 90% of the way back and I was still hearing them, it was slightly concerning, but most likely just a coincidence. I decided to just ignore it and keep going back. Once I reached our place, the footsteps seemed to stop. I got inside and went straight to bed. The next day, however, I found myself in a similar situation. It was 10 p.m. and we were all out several blocks away once again, but at a different place this time. When we got there, I realized I had forgotten my wallet. I hadn't needed it to that point, but knew I would need it now, and I told my friends I would just walk back and get it really quick. It was only about a 10 minute walk, so it wasn't a huge deal at all. As I was walking though, I once again heard the noise of footsteps behind me. Once again, it wasn't strange until I got back and heard the same footsteps. This time, I looked behind me as I was a short ways from home. I saw a man who had his hood up and was looking straight at the ground. Obviously, I didn't recognize him and couldn't make out much details of his appearance other than he seemed a little sketchy to me. I kept going back and looked back once more to see the man sort of walk away shortly before I reached our place. I was relieved to see that and went inside and quickly got my wallet then went back out with my friends. As I walked back, I was pretty scared to be followed again, and I walked at a fast pace until I got to a more busy area of town. I made it back to my friends safely, and we stayed out- But now he knows where you live. You're not that safe. For a few hours, then all walked back together. When we were walking back, I didn't notice us being followed at all. Once we were back, I got ready for bed and went to my room that I was staying in. I turned off all the lights and went to sleep. The next thing I knew, I woke up to see that it was still dark outside. I didn't really think anything of it, because I would occasionally wake up for no reason in the middle of the night. I turned over to my other side to go back to sleep, but when I did, I noticed in the doorway of my room was a man. The man was wearing a hooded sweatshirt, but in the dark, I couldn't tell anything about him. I was looking at him for a solid five seconds before I let out a loud scream. <laughs> The man then walked out of view of the doorway. Shortly after that, 
I heard my friends wake up in the other rooms. A few of them came into my room to see if I was okay. I told them what I had seen, and they all came into my room with me and we called the police. We told them that a man had somehow gotten into our place, and they said they would send an officer to our location. As we were still on the phone, we heard the door from downstairs slam shut. When the police came, the man was gone, and they couldn't find him anywhere. We figured he left, and we didn't see him for the rest of our trip. It's a mystery to me, though, how he was able to get in. Obviously, 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 nobody checked the checklist. Check the checklist. Nobody checked the checklist. Nobody checked the checklist. Mama didn't check the checklist. Daddy didn't check the checklist. Brother didn't check the checklist. Sister didn't check. Somebody was sus hoops. This is the story of my spring break vacation from about four years ago. If this story starts off with an image like this, it cannot be good. I was in college and we had an entire week off from classes for spring break. So me and my two friends, Daniel and Joey, decided to take a road trip to Nashville, Tennessee. The first parts of the drive went really well. All three of us had sort of old cars, but we decided to take my car because I was the only one with an SUV and had the most space. My car was relatively old, but for the first day of the trip, it ran great. But on the second day, when we had made it into Tennessee, we started driving through the mountains and my car started acting up. I heard my engine making some pretty weird sounds. We had plenty of gas, but the car seemed as if it was going to die. The unfortunate part was that it was nighttime and now the roads were getting really quiet. We also didn't get a very good signal up here at all. My car did eventually die, and we came to a stop on the side of the road. We were still about two hours away from our hotel. I tried starting the car back up, but had no luck in it. Our first stop was to get out our phones and look to see how far we were from the nearest gas station or store, then see if we could call for help. Unfortunately, none of us could get a decent signal. We looked at our surroundings, which were mostly woods around us, and an occasional car which drove by. The road was also really narrow. I was hoping maybe my car would start up again after a while, so we sat there waiting to start it again. And as we did, we talked about what we should do. We were debating our options when a car came slowly driving down the street and then stopped on the side of the road in front of us. The car was an older, weird-looking van. When it came to a stop, the driver got out and seemed even creepier than the van he drove. He had long hair and he wore a hat. He was also wearing sunglasses and had older clothes on and was smoking a cigarette in his mouth. He approached us and told us he would like to give us a ride. Um, I... I told him we didn't need a ride and we were just waiting for our roadside service. The man laughed in a really creepy way and then told us it would be better if we got a ride from him. At that point, I would have just said, Dead ass. I would. I would have just said like, "Sir, we're good. You can leave now. Roadside assistance is coming. You can leave now, sir. Have a good night, sir." Bye. Dead eyes. He then told us how he drove these mountains every day and he knew them like the back of his hand. Okay, so? We told him we would be fine, but thanks anyways. He then started laughing again and slowly walked back to his van and got inside. Then he drove away really slow. We were all glad to see him leave because he really gave us the creeps. We sat in the car and kept trying to get signals on our phone. Sometimes we would have one bar and it would sort of work, but then it would cut out from having signal. About five minutes later, we were all in the car when we noticed the van slowly coming back around the corner. It was driving at an extremely slow pace. The van was now coming back from the direction it had left. and We saw that the man's driver's window was rolled down and he had his head sticking out the window now. I heard Daniel say, oh no, he's back. The man was driving literally five miles per hour 
and as he got slowly closer to us, Joey asked what the man was holding. I looked over and saw that the man had what appeared to be a gun in his hand. We all started to freak out knowing he was driving towards us and we all feared the worst. I took the keys and desperately tried to start my car one more time. To my surprise, luckily the car started up just as the man had gotten his van about 50 feet from us. God! <clears throat> and Adidas was on your side. From there, I put the car into drive and slammed my foot on the gas and we sped down the road. As we passed the man in his van, we heard him yell something. The man looked to try to make a U-turn on the road, but was unable to make it without having to back up due to the narrow roads. I sped away as fast as I could and took the very first exit. We stopped at the first gas station we were able to find, and luckily the man didn't follow us there. I don't think he knew which direction we went. I was able to get some help from my car and fix it, and then we continued our drive and made it safely to our hotel. The rest of the trip went fine, and my car never broke down again. My ass. My ass, my ass. One year, when I was in college, I went on a spring break trip with a few of my girlfriends. This was a few years ago now, and I was a senior at the time. We went down to California for a few days, and mainly went to the beach and to local places. We also went to a few parties because my friend Maria actually had a couple of friends in the area. Her friends went to school down there and she introduced us to them. At one of the parties we were at, it was at this house down by the beach and it was really nice. At one point, this creepy looking guy who seemed really drunk came up to me and wouldn't leave me alone, even after I made it clear to him that I didn't want to talk with him. He sort of followed me around for the rest of the night there. He didn't leave until another guy had to walk him out because he was acting so crazy. When he finally left, nobody there even seemed to know who he was. was Hell no! Nah. But that's not where the story ends. A couple of days later, I was on the beach nearby just relaxing, when I noticed the same man at a far distance away just staring at me. He was well over a hundred feet away, but I could still tell that it was definitely him, and it really creeped me out when I saw him. I suddenly didn't feel so comfortable on that beach. There were not a whole lot of other people around at the time, and I decided I'd go back to the hotel that we were staying in. The next day, which was our second to last day there, we were in our hotel when there was a knock at the door. Maria answered it and told me that there was someone there to see me. When I went to the door, I immediately saw the same guy and slammed the door shut in his face. I then told my friends that he was the guy who had been following me. We yelled that if he didn't leave, we would call the police, and thankfully, he walked away. But when we were leaving our hotel later that day, we all saw him standing in the lobby. We made sure that he didn't follow us, but I felt that this was now a serious problem. I didn't see him at all as we were out that night, and when we got back that night, we told someone at the front desk about our situation. They told us they would look out for the man. And that was our last night in California, as we would be flying back the next day. We all took an Uber to the airport, and shortly after we got there as we were in line, I saw the man once again sitting God, down damn. The looking at me. I was really freaked out. I looked over my shoulder the whole rest of the day. Luckily, he wasn't on our flight. And when I got back, I never did see him again. I just worry that I'll see him again one day or that he will stalk another person. You, 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 you're gonna see him again one day. Uh, I, I bet, I bet my life, I bet my, you know, my whole life savings. You won't see him again. Or he gonna see you again. What you talking about? Yeah, I'm not, I don't mess with that stalking, that stalking shit. Y'all got that. This one right here. Y'all probably should have clucked him up on site. Yeah, I probably should have slashed this. Nah, he had a gun. Right? He had a gun, I think. Oh, no. This one, though. This one? The last one? The first one? I feel like you going... I feel like y'all going to have another interaction. And I feel like that interaction... It's not going to be 
you know, it's gonna be pretty, pretty intense. Just keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy, my family.